Hi, my name is Dr. Catherine Hughes from Crime Slake. In today's video, we're going to be looking at the final words spoken by death row inmates before they're executed. The USA is the only Western country that still executes prisoners. The death penalty is currently legal in 31 states, but since 1976, more than one third of all 1,465 executions in the US have occurred in Texas. Texas was also the first state to allow homicide survivors, such as family and friends of victims, also known as living victims, to attend the executions. Criminal punishment usually aims to reform the prisoner in the hopes that they can someday return to society. But in the case of the death penalty, the person is told that there's no chance of reformation. Their lives will be taken, but they're given the opportunity to speak some final words. The state takes the prisoner's life. In exchange, they're offered a few minutes to speak their mind. Given such a powerless situation, it seems quite reasonable that prisoners would respond in an emotional way. But what precisely shapes their final words? Is it the presence of living victims that spurs an urge to confess or to ask for forgiveness? Do they want to protest their innocence or ask for forgiveness? A prison chaplain is part of the protocol at Texas executions. Perhaps because of this religious presence, some prisoners find a need to turn back to a moral or religious code. Whatever the motivation or combination of factors, it's clear that in this moment for many prisoners, a demonstration of their own humanity is of the utmost importance. My aim in this video is not to discuss the relevance of the death penalty or argue that I'm for or against it. However, it's more of an exploration around the psychology behind these prisoners' final words. I don't intend to offend anyone, especially victims, with this discussion. Neither do I want to paint death row prisoners in a positive or a negative way. My aim is to explore what this group of people finds most worthy of expression moments before their death. In the presence of the warden and a chaplain, the last words might be spoken into a microphone after the inmate's been strapped to the gurney in the execution chamber. When the inmate has finished their statement, the warden signals for the lethal injection to begin. From then, it's about seven minutes before the prisoner's dead. What emotions or personal concerns do death row inmates verbally express in the face of their imminent death? To what extent do their last words of executed prisoners reflect the dread and anxiety that we intuitively ascribe to death and dying? What makes death row inmates' last words unique is that there's no doubt that these words are the individual's final message to the outside world. They're in a unique position of knowing exactly where, when and in what manner that they'll die. They're powerless in this situation and the only thing that they do have control over is their last meal and their final words. The final statement of death row inmates are available online. I'll put a link to that um, in the video description below. I'm just going to read one of them now. Yes, sir, I would like to thank God for my dad, my Lord Jesus, Saviour, for saving me and changing my life. I want to apologise to my in-laws for causing all this emotional pain. I love you all and consider you all my sisters I never had. I want to thank you for forgiving me. Thank you, Warden. Those words were spoken by a man who shot his 29-year-old wife, his seven-year-old daughter and his nine-month-old daughter, as well as his father-in-law and his sister-in-law. These final statements can vary in themes that they portray. A number of psychologists have studied the themes, content, linguistics in these final statements before now. Over 95% of final statements expressed some sort of love or appreciation for someone else. This was often for a family member, a close friend or a chaplain. Around 70% asked to be forgiven by the victim's families. Many of these statements also expressed religious belief and in particular that they believe that they're going to a better, happier place. 
other common themes were activism, claims of innocence and for a small minority, silence. Most death row inmates didn't seem to fear death, judging by their last statements and they most often chose to express religion or spirituality, love and appreciation, activism, forgiveness, claims of innocence and as I said for a small number, silence. Surprisingly, the majority of final statements contained positive emotions and messages for others such as expressing love and messages of spirituality. One study found that final statements contained a higher percentage of positive emotion words than negative emotion words. Another study found nine themes, the most common being reference to love at 70%, spirituality at 56% of the statements, apologising to the victim's family in 37% of statements and regret for the offence at 36%. Similarly, another study by Vollum and Longmire in 2009 explored the major themes and subsets of more specific themes in final statements from 292 executions that were carried out between December 1982 and March 2004. They found that the most common of the 10 major themes that were identified included well wishes and expressions of love, religion, contrition and gratitude. Final statements often contain messages directed towards family members and friends or the victim's family, expressions of internal feelings and references to the situation, whether that be an acceptance of it, such as taking responsibility, or a rejection of it, such as by declaring their innocence or making some sort of political statement. Subsequently, inmates' statements most often indicated how they handled the situation, included outward orientated, such as comforting others, seeking forgiveness, wishes for others, and or inward orientated, such as expressions of religion or self-comfort, expressions in the case of acceptance, and only rarely expressions of denial or accusations, commonly followed by a last sentence in the form of a simple closure. Robert Elder, author of The Last Words of the Executed, stated that inmates' final words conform in some way to the five stages of grief theory, and they are denial, anger, bargaining, depression and acceptance. And whether there is remorse for the victims or not, there will be grief for the actions that have brought them to this point in their lives. Some researchers, such as Eaton and Theora in 2009, have explored the frequency and content of apologies by inmates before their death. They found that 33% of 402 prisoners executed between December 1982 and August 2007 in Texas offered an apology for their crime, most of which were directed towards the victim's family. In addition, inmates' apologies were often accompanied by expressions of sincerity and remorse in their last statements, with inmates admitting guilt for the crime in 23% of those cases, asking for forgiveness in 21%, or showing empathy for the victim's family at 22%. The final statement of inmates on death row have been compared to terminally ill patients, suicide notes and those asked to imagine that their death was imminent. Terminally ill patients explained that they felt sorrowful about leaving life, but the majority of these patients expressed that they weren't anxious about their death. They said that one way of coping with their death included focusing on the positive aspects of their lives. Another study found that the most prevalent themes in hospice patients interviewed included references to other people and time-related comments expressing and locating present experiences in their life course. Altogether, these findings indicated that terminally ill people seem to fear the process of dying more than the death itself. So far, research evidence comparing death row inmates' actual last words spoken in the face of imminent death with people's ideas about how they would feel when asked to imagine their own death is imminent is extremely scarce. 
In a recent study, Goranson and colleagues in 2017 compared effective expressions in executed Texas death row inmates' last words with those people's imaginations of imminent death by execution. They found that executed prisoners' last words contained significantly more expressions of positive effect and fewer expressions of negative effect when compared to people's simulated written last statements or spoken last statements when they're asked to imagine what they would think or say. The results also indicated that compared with people's simulated last statements, death row inmates' last words contain significantly higher rates of words relating to social connection and religion. In addition, the differences in positive and negative effect between death row inmates' last words and people's simulated last words could be partially explained by death row inmates' increased use of social connection and religion words. Taken together, studies of executed death row inmates' last words demonstrate that they contain surprisingly more positive than negative emotional expressions with their final statements. They found that the content themes revolve mostly around expressions of love and appreciation, messages to relevant social other people, and religious beliefs. Prisoners' final statements, spoken moments prior to their death, seem to focus on aspects including social connection and religion that make life and death meaningful to that person. If you want to read any of the death row inmates' last statements, as I said, I will put a link to that in the video description below. If you want to learn more about the psychology of crime and criminal behaviour, there are a range of courses available on my website, so head on over to my website and see if any of those would be of interest to you. Thanks so much for watching. Bye for now.